Thank you, Johnson. She is the friendliest dog in the world, but if you would prefer her not to be around, we can pop her somewhere else. But. into you in public, check your handbag, check your handbag, she used to say. And actually the only time I was mugged on Oxford Street, soon after I'd moved up to London, and I'd just started work, and I had my purse stuffed full of cash, like this really, really hard-earned cash, and I was on Oxford Street about to spend it, and somebody bumped into me, and what did I do? I checked my handbag, and I looked up, and this guy had nicked my purse, and he was holding my purse, Oh, he was still there? He was still there, because I immediately, I, it was instantaneous, because I was so well trained by my grandmother, and I knew I would do anything to get that purse back. It would be like Victorian days, I would run down the road shouting, stop thief, I would have all these people running with me, and we would get that purse back. 
And I looked at him and he looked at me and he knew that he couldn't run off with that with the purse. He took one ten pound note out of the purse and then he handed me the purse back and then he ran off. And that was my grandmother, that was my grandmother's voice, check your handbag. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what to do about your knickers and what to do if someone bumps I hope I hope <laughs> neither of you have ever heard of that this. Is. <laughs> No, you're very lucky, you know and I, you know, yeah, you do, you do know, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, you know, why, why would you? Um, this is apparently so that you look as if you're in a porn film, so there's no, so the anus is the same colour as the skin surrounding it, so no longer is it a rosy and healthy pink <laughs> colour, but it looks kind of like a lighter colour, um, you know, to, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, perhaps there's a cultural element here because actually if you've got dark skin there's no point in actually bleaching the oh. anus it's like because then you just have a different sort of you know who knows you know but then i guess it'll, it'll come down to things to what shade of pink is exactly <laughs> exactly you know in fact perhaps then you don't have to color the you know instead of bleaching it maybe you'd have to color it a bit darker i mean god knows that would definitely be on a to don't list um <laughs> that definitely on a to don't list and what else do you think would be on a to don't list um many <laughs> um, how do I describe it? Ricky described it as a love letter from a daughter to a mother. Basically, the journey of how this once girl who is trying to become herself um, finally becomes herself. The changes she goes through, the embarrassing events that she has and how in the end it's learning how to laugh at herself that makes her more confident. But her relationship with her mother, the ups, the downs, um, and what that has meant to her. And I guess it's that classic thing of I don't want to become my mother. And then you actually realise maybe there's nothing wrong with becoming my mother. I'm a poet, so yeah, poetic writing dialogue. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> but yeah. It's about the switch between the different people and um, <laughs> I mean I got a few things like her description of Sarah was great she said something like oh I said describe Sarah and the first thing she said was Sarah is a healer I thought okay Sarah is a what? healer uh, she holds the energy of the communities around her and other people and she shifts people's perceptions of themselves. And I thought that is a weird way to describe someone. I mean, it's brilliant, but... She told me an odd story about when she saw a guy getting mugged and she went to go and help out the guy and whoever was doing the mugging threw a brick at her and she ended up in the hospital. Um, I think she had a concussion or something. And when she came out of the incident, she said, Sarah spoke to her and said some words to her. And whatever Sarah said made her think of herself not as a victim. And it was that kind of thing. It's me just judging off more conversation. But they seem to have a relationship where she is quite dependent on her. Or maybe Sarah just has that energy. Um, when I asked the daughter to describe her mother, the first thing she said was she's a force of nature. Other friend, Cherry. Well, I am Cherry. All grown up now is nice to have. I don't know how else to explain. I'm the place you come to let your armor down. I wonder what it would be like to be human for a day. Maybe I'd write a book. Look, your name could go on the book and I can be like your coach, right? My life, my life rolls out before me, like separate rooms in the same house. To be tall and wanted. At school, I watched the girls who were wanted and wish I wasn't so pale, that my hair wasn't so dark. I had an obsession with scents. If I spelled dog B on the bus, I would go around sniffing myself all day. Sometimes I'd approach the friendly girls, stick my armpit in their faces and say, smell, does it smell good? And they would make that face. I guess maybe it wasn't the best way to make friends.
just want to experience everything. It's, it's easy. One, two, three. Nothing exciting. Yeah. Probably I would have been feeling much more energetic and there was something else happening. Hi, Kevin. So, uh, yeah. Nothing really. Yeah. 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 Hello, everyone, and welcome to Home Theatre. My name's Fiona, and I'll be looking after you. Um, can I please start by asking you to make sure that your phones are on silent? Thank you. Um, you are one of 30 homes all across London that in a few minutes will have their own show starting. This project is being produced by a theatre that I work for called Theatre Royal Stratford East in East London by the Olympic Park. It's part of our theatre's commitment to bring theatre to the people and to develop new work that celebrates and explores the stories coming out of our wonderful city. Thank you to Sarah and Mal for allowing us into your home and for telling us a little bit about yourself. Through these conversations, Tolu, who's upstairs, has spent the week making a little show specifically for you. Uh, we'd like to get your feedback on what you saw and how Tolu, and Tolu will be there to answer questions as well. Please feel free to tweet about it on hashtag Home Theatre UK. I'll also be on hand to answer any questions about Home Theatre or our theatre, Theatre or Stratford East. So ladies and gentlemen, can I introduce Tolu and the show titled Cherry Tree House. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be starting upstairs, oh. follow me. <laughs> oh, cherry tree. Do you want to bring our tea? Um, yeah. Too young, but I've done lots of happenings in the 70s. What I did. <laughs> I'm not stalking you exactly, you know, um, I think, different explanation, Louise, when Louise was, was younger, she used to speak to the house, right, she would uh, scribble notes on the walls and, and, and you would tease her, you would tell her that she was speaking to an imaginary friend, and you call the friend Cherry, well see, I'm Cherry, We're all grown up, yes, but uh, it's nice to How else can I explain this? Um, I'm the place you come to let your armor down. I, uh, I shed and grow with you, normally in the background, silently, but these days I've been wondering what it would be like to speak, because I have so many stories myself. I watch your TVs, your books, and I'm, I'm jealous. So I thought if I could be human for a day, then I'd tell my story. Any of my stories. Look, you can tell me Okay. I could be like your ghostwriter. How would the story go? Hmm. Let me think about that for a second. I 
I got it. My life rolls out before me like uh, separate rooms in the same house, yes? That, that's predictable. Mm. Give me a moment. I'll soon step into my genius. Sometimes it takes a while. Uh, come with me. Um, come. You're not singing. I mean, it's easy and I'm only human for a day, right? And I really want to get this experience. You know, I hear you guys sing together. I want you to sing with me. And it's quite easy. It's um, brain work. Work with me. You're going to sing, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. One, two, three. Brain work. Work with me. Brain work. Work with me. drop to the floor. Step out of them. <laughs> Don't bend down for any reason. Just step out of them and keep walking as though nothing happened. <laughs> now, if you're on the tube, stride down the escalators, <laughs> leave them where they fell. They know they're no good to you now. Just go. My grandmother had the best advice. She would say the funniest things, and she had a way of making you feel free and easy and just there, alive to be whatever you wanted. And I wanted to be tall and uh, beautiful and wanted. At school, I would look at the other girls, the ones who were wanted, and I would wish my skin wasn't so pale or my hair so dark. I had a weird obsession with scents. If I was on a bus and I smelled uh, dog pee, I would go around just <sighs> inordinately sniffing myself. Sometimes I would approach the, the friendlier looking girls and stick my armpit in their faces and say, smell, good? <laughs> and they would make that face, the one you were making. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't the best way to make friends, I don't know. All I know. <laughs> is I was a teenage ball of questions and the answers were never right until I was home and then there were no questions just a sigh a smile and scribbles beneath layers of wallpaper to a presence we named Cherry I felt like all of me in there and soon I started to wonder what happened when I stepped out Inside, I was invincible. Now, inside, when boys cat whistled or jeered at me, I would plant my feet firmly on the floor and say, I'm not a cat or a dog. If you want my attention, show me some respect. Now, outside, um, outside, when they cat whistled and jeered at me, I became an Olympic runner. And uh, one day, running into the house, a question snuck in with my feet. How do I become all of me out there? How do I bridge the gap in between the, the invincible girl in the house and the timid one that left every morning? How do I grow into myself? You remember my name? Cherry. 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 I like my name. Now, Louise? Louise worries too much. All of this finding myself thing is becoming such a job. She still speaks to me sometimes, doesn't scribble as much these days. She just kind of stares at me as though 
She was wondering what my language sounds like. Does it scream or whisper? She settled on a whisper. I like that. I lend myself to her in uh, suggestions, punctuating beds of thought. You know, like the voice, the one that, that answers back when you speak to yourself. I know you speak to yourself. Mm -hmm. These days she looks happy, but she hasn't said why. I need to make her spill. Maybe uh, write it in a journal, and then I can just stand over her and read every single line. And the only sign of my presence, give me some random note, uh, something like, I saw a, a cherry tree today on the way home that seemed oddly familiar. And she won't even know why she wrote it down. I'm going to try and whisper, see if it works. Rather out than in, Louise, rather out than in. Pray it, sing it, write it, rather out than in, Louise. I think it's working. Let's go. Story. Mom! Well, see, Mom came to my bed just before bedtime, right? And uh, she was she was just going to say goodnight, but I said, Mom, Mom, I met this girl in school today. She, she, she's going to the same uni as me in, in, in September. And I stuck my outfit in her face, right? And she just, <laughs> she let her eyes wander through me. And just as I was about to walk away, she grabbed my arm, lifted it. <laughs> You're okay. Your turn. Nose. Bobby. <laughs> I have to say, for the first time, I understood how awkward it was to, you know, ask a complete stranger to get up close and personal in your hygiene. But what the hell, I started this, so I thought I'd, um, finish it. All clear. And just like that, we both burst out laughing. And Mom, I made my friend, my own friend, Trina. Her name... Her name is Trina. We'll go back to the story in a second. It's just, I have to inter interject just, just a little. I feel so proud. It's like a, a caterpillar is butterflying itself without quite understanding the magnitude of the moment. You see, all those times she scribbled on me, I, I held her tears, her wonderings about whether or not she would ever be worthy. And this is like a, a, a leap into becoming. I know the story. We'll, we'll go back to the story now. Please. Mom! Mother! Did you miss me? I'm home! This was how I introduced myself to my parents' house every time I came back from uni. And my mother would hold my shoulders, tilt me back slightly, and inspect me as though looking for nicks on a piece of silver mm -hmm. or a diamond. And there would always be that refrain, you haven't been looking after yourself properly, Louise. Just before she says, come, <coughs> sit, let's talk. What have you been up to? <coughs> and I'd be like, mm, mm, mom, oof. Have you heard of a fanny fart? <laughs> <laughs> Trina, you remember Trina, right? So we decided to go to a self-defense class. One of those things where you're doing lots of floor work, judo, jiu-jitsu, details. There was a cute boy there. And, uh, he was practicing the moves with me, and Trina was jealous. She kept looking back and forth at me, right? And he goes to do the move. He moves me close. He straddles me. Yes, Mom, straddles, but it's not like that. Nobody's thinking about that in these kind of classes when they mount you. Yes, Mom, mount, but not like, can I tell my story? <laughs> so I'm doing everything right. I've got my legs on his shoulders. My crush is like that close to his face, and... I've got his collar. I hold it. I'm about to choke him when <laughs> oh. this noise, like a flattening tire, <laughs> just escapes my badge. And I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. And I'm not sure what to do. Do I say, a... it's not a fart fart. <laughs> it's like a, a, a fanny fart. So it's better. It, it doesn't smell. <laughs> or, uh, excuse me. Sorry. Well, maybe just go ahead and choke him. Trina must have heard it because she's looking at me. She's trying not to laugh, but she's in spasm, so I can't look at her right now. I have to keep my face straight. He's looking at me. I'm looking at him. He's acting like he doesn't know what's happened, and I just go ahead and choke him. I mean, what would we have done, Mom? We laughed and laughed, and uh, 
Somewhere in her eyes was a growing recognition that sparkled. It was as though whilst I was discovering myself, she was rediscovering me and herself. Come to think about it now. The more I learned to laugh about myself, the more confidence became me. It was as though there was something. There was something about those people that made you feel as though your, your tears and your embarrassments were as safe in their hands as your, your dreams were. I should write that down, actually. Scribble mm -hmm. it like I used to with Cherry back in the... I told you. I told you she would mention my name and she wouldn't even know why. Cherry. Since she's gone, even the people in the house have started to cut on to me. They have a, an archaeological museum in honor of me. Quite grand, right? I like that name. Things they have found over the years, and like you, like, like them, I'm not one thing. Last year, peeling up the floorboards, they found relics of my porn star days, you know. Pictures, women, old guests from the house, posing naked, hands in odd places. It was wild back then. Um, and then there were the papers, the 1928 papers from the Daily Mail stuffed in the walls in the bathroom. And the pink paper with uh, Audrey Lord's obituary on the first page. When I tell you there are stories in the crevices of my foundations, believe me. Like you, sometimes I just want someone to lift to the surface. I think I hear Louise's the usual laughter from the chair, but it's a little heavy. Let's go. Story. Mom. <laughs> so by the time I arrived there, right, my uh, my knickers were half masked and uh, I remembered grandma's advice, but I didn't know, I couldn't, I mean, I wasn't wearing a skirt. I was wearing baggy dungarees. It was windy outside. I was wearing heels on the way to, to, to meet my uh, fiance Clinton's family. And it was going to be a long ride. I, I felt uncomfortable in heels anyway, but you know, I was trying to be some kind of ladylike. I know you say there's no such thing, mom, but everybody else thinks there is. So I was trying to make a good first impression, but I was a picture. Imagine this old Victorian house, everything is in order. And I arrive unbeknownst to them, almost half naked, advancing like a hobbling soldier, trying to avoid Clinton's gaze because he doesn't know what is going on. It wasn't so funny then, but afterwards, you know, when uh, his parents had gone to sleep and he had gotten over himself and I had swallowed my embarrassment, we laughed and laughed, rolled up and flat all over the wooden floor. I think that was the day I said no more heels for me. It was also the day I decided uh, no more of this doing what women should and shouldn't do to be women. I mean, what the hell? I know you're thinking it, Mom, so I'll say it out loud. It's the day I chose to hear your voice in my head and listen to it. Are you happy? Funny story, Louise. Very funny story. Particularly the part about your fiance, you said, Clinton, who I never met. Is that how you think you would just drop it into a conversation and it would be okay with me? Or oh, he's a man, is he? What kind of man doesn't meet your family first before asking him for your hand in marriage? What kind of man doesn't, as a courtesy at least, ask for our permission? I mean, he does have some matters. He's taking you home. I mean, he, he already took you home to see his parents, so this is really your fault. Because you haven't bothered to respect me and your father enough to, to bring him here. He taught you better, Louise. I'm disappointed. Except, of course, there's something you're hiding in her. That must be why. Even then, I'm disappointed. Mom! It's really not that serious. You, you're always doing this to me. You don't do that with Oscar. He gets all the nice stuff because he came later. I mean, oh, mom. I can't remember when the energy dispelled. I just remember that day they slammed my door so hard I thought my arms would drop off his hinges. 
And it took them a while before they sat down at that table again and had a conversation. I mean, they were trying. Louise brought Clinton home. They were trying to build a connection. But eventually it was mom. One day, quite awkwardly, she said, uh, Louise, come sit, let's talk. I was watching one of those reality things the other day, Chelsea something, and the girls, they were talking about, uh, they were having a drink just before they went for a Brazilian. I didn't even know what that was at the time. So I, I, I looked, I Googled it, and uh, hot wax, hair pulling. I mean, why in the world would anyone want to do something mm -hmm. so infinitely painful to themselves for what, beauty? <laughs> Mom, <laughs> I feel like I'm about to uh, corrupt your innocence, but there's worse, so hold on to your seats. You ready? Anal bleaching. Yeah, I said it, Mom. Anal bleaching. Just pick up your jaw. Up. Higher. Higher. Thank you. So, yes. No, Mom, I haven't. <clears throat> These women, right? Girls, whatever. They want like porn star genitals, so they do something to the the skin on the anus so it looks like the same around the, the, the bottoms. I don't know, Mom, I'm just telling you what it's about. Your face, though, I can't get over your face. I love you, Mom. Mom, those were the tears. All I said was anal bleaching, and I love you. <laughs> Why the tears? Louise, I used to worry about you, who you would become and how. I used to speak to my mother and she would say, Louise will grow into herself, carry everything lightly. And the, the transitions, whether rocky or smooth, will be part of her character. Once she told me, I raised you warrior. <laughs> Before, before I ever heard your voice, I was howling after you, chasing contractions that would bounce you out. Me and your father in a frenzied dance in the garden, listening to uh, Janis Joplin, making up the words we didn't remember, both of us chanting, cry baby, cry baby, welcome home. <clears throat> when Janis had finished, you still hadn't appeared, you know, the contractions that the, the midwife told us to go and locate in the garden. So we moved on to Joan Baez, I think it was 500 miles. She'd look at me and say, uh, your father put together the best playlist for your home birth. A bunch of uh, female protest singers all overcoming something. It was kind of apt. I mean, imagine it, Louise, your grandparents in the garden. Granddad hand on your grandmother's stomach, both of them rocking, him singing, uh, Lord, she's one, Lord, she's two, Lord, she's three, Lord, she's four. My baby's five, five hundred miles away from home. Just like that, he, he sang and she spoke. Said, baby, they have told me to come and look for contractions outside. I really don't know what I'm doing, but round about now, everybody starts to get scared. I don't want to go to the hospital, so come back. Whatever you do, just come back. And just like that, him singing, her speaking, them dancing, and a pleading wind. I came. She would hold my face in her hands and say, you're special. And Louise is your daughter. She has no other option but to be amazing. And you are Louise. It has been beautiful just watching you grow. Oh, mom. See, now I'm crying. Ugh. I wasn't planning to cry today. Um. I have watched you hinge people to their truth, switch their perceptions of themselves with uh, words as light and heavy as rain. 
I heard one of your friends describe you as a healer. She said you hold the energies of all the people around you and you're important. And I see that now. Through you, I, I got to know that being means as much about me as it is about the people I choose to keep around me and the things that I, I let go. Thank you. I wasn't planning to do this today, Mom, but it seems like a good time. I've got some news. I don't know how you're going to take it, but... Uh, Yes, mom. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> they can't really speak right now. Um, but somewhere in between the tears and the prolonged embraces are words that will never see the light of day. Words emitted in the heat of a long embrace, heads bobbing up and down in response to statements understood but never actually made. If I was mom right now, if I could speak for her, I think I would say, Louise, remember you are everything you need to be. Yesterday we walked down the street to Lewisham and it felt like deja vu. I mean, there was that young man who was trying to pick you up. I think he, he said, uh, Yes, you're wearing those boots, the biker boots, the one that the mouse died in. Um, you said, no, he said, yeah, he said, I'd like to take them off for you. And I, he was so corny, I wanted to respond, but I just stood back and watched you. I was so proud. The way you stood there, stared at him, <laughs> and just laughed until he walked away sheepish. Well, Louise, my girl. You have been and will be many women, always changing, but some parts of you staying the same. Hold everything lightly. At an abrupt moment, something will transition you into the next phase and you will have everything you need to be amazing. And when your daughter starts to worry like you did about what to do now to grow into herself, there's a poem I wrote, actually, at a, a poetry whiskey session with Anna the other night. Um, I think it's called Fly. I'll say it as we walk, but I'm going to find a box, a pretty little box, and we can put it into it, and you can give it to her when she starts to worry. Yeah? Yeah. Come, come with me. The poem, yeah, the poem starts, uh, seize the mirror. Make it captive to your face. Stop sinkholes under your cheeks don't lie and don't understand when I tell them. It's in the reach of my arms, <laughs> the span of my hips, the stride in my step, the curl in my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenal woman. Now there's a seat here for the girl you were trying to shed. Go ahead. Give the mirror back its sight. Fly. I think she'll like it. I'm not sure. I think she'll like it, but I, I have boxes somewhere. Uh, maybe this one. If I can just make sure I haven't put anything else in there. I'll leave the poem on the top. And you can just, you know, tie it in a bowl and, yeah, just give it to her. Um, when you're ready. Now I'm not sure how I end my story. Maybe at this point Louise holds her mother's face and just looks at her dead in the eyes and say, you're, you're a force of nature, mom. Maybe it ends differently. I don't know. What do you think? Um, I'm going to sleep on it. But wait. You have something to think about as well. Uh, can I be your ghost rider? Good night. <laughs>
yeah, 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 Trying to figure out how to put some together that incorporated all of us. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a so there were all things you told me, or Ellie told me something. Um, I asked Ellie and Anna to describe Sarah, and the first thing you said was she's a force of nature, and I thought, okay, I'm putting that in. That's brilliant. Anna said she's a healer, and a few other things, and I thought, okay, and she switches people's perceptions of themselves, and she told me a story, and I thought, how do I use that? So writing the story was about the impression I got from other people and from Sarah about who she is and the effect she has on people's lives and how do I tell that story. Okay, the house is going to talk. It's a lot easier that way. <laughs> Obviously a few stories are made up or from my own personal embarrassment stories, but uh, <laughs> that's how this works. So yeah. What were your thoughts about being so up close with, up close and quite personal and almost invading your personal space with a performance? Did you like it, not like it? Personally, I thought that would be pretty challenging for me, but I, I, I really do want to say, I, I think, you know, Charlotte's performance and what she was able to do with that really made that intimacy. Um, really, for me, it really got me right from the start, and it was really comfortable to be this close and to have you tell that story. Mm -hmm. And I do think that's something about how you were able to deliver it, the mm -hmm. way you spoke, how you mm -hmm. spoke. It, it felt very, very comfortable. I, I recognised Dana Bleacher. Because I've had to have conversations with it. Uh, <laughs> you talk to me. She came from Ellie. <laughs> 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 we, we, we won't be checking. Um, <laughs> this was actually to watch members of the audience react to the piece really closely, and that really moved me. So did we feel it invaded our space? But actually, not at all. Mm. It, I felt very comfortable, like we were having a chat even just one-to-one -one sometimes worked well, like really them. well, I think. <laughs> yeah. I had this wonderful moment where I realised I just wanted to submit to not understand it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that I was enjoying the confusion mm. in the best possible way. So you as a, as a seer, actually, for, for who we are, who Sarah is, who you are, who this part of Lewisham is. I, I love that. Mm. Experience is bringing theatre to you. Do you think after this experience would it encourage you to see different types of theatre? Do you, do you go to the theatre? Would you want to see Stratford Eve? <laughs> <laughs> what does it make you think about your experiences going forward from there? So my experience of kind of theatre for I think quite a long period was it just felt tired and boring. And, and I didn't feel that I was included or spoken to, actually. And, um, so I, I guess this sort of really inspires that in me. And, and I would say I would go to more like this. Yes. What I love about it is it, the sort of community feel. You know, mm. and actually, I, I've made a joke about it, but it is. Mm. Mm. It's fantastic. Yeah. 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 Actually, I feel privileged or honoured. Yeah. 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 Coming into my, you know, well, it's not my home, but it does feel like my home. It's coming, yeah. you know. It feels really inclusive, this mm. way of experiencing theatre, and something's really brought us together. So even as we go off and do our separate things, we will always share this this um, in incredible evening of where we didn't know what to expect. I don't think anyone, having talked talk with Tolu and Matt Catherine, and, you know, I had no idea really what to expect. And I didn't for a while either. <laughs> 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 Don't you think that happens in the best theatre always? Yes. If there's a play, if you're in an oh, audience, yeah. even if it's only you know, two and a half hours, you're you're a community for those two and a half yeah. hours. Yeah. In the best place, yeah. in the yeah. best theatre. Yeah. I mean, I go to theatre a lot. And I go to Stratford East as well, mm -hmm. and I do think it's um, it's always been a community theatre, always.